give a quick note that we will not be taking a break because we have so many great speakers here today. Uh, but just to let you know, there are restrooms whenever you need to take a break um, around the corner. If you go left, and uh, if you go right, there's also an all gender restroom. If you go right and take your first lap, and there's also a women's restroom there. Yeah. Um, and so we are setting up right now with uh, Robert uh, Corsini coming up once again, and he will be talking first how he interviewed Assange in the spring of 2016, and how he learned to use WikiLeaks as a journalistic research tool. Um, and then we'll actually be seeing an, a documentary with Julian Assange, the architects of denial. Oh, and. So I just want to explain a little bit about my background as a documentary filmmaker. Um, I worked for uh, several different companies over the years and I had the opportunity to work on a project about the Armenian genocide. And in so doing, I was given the task to uh, interview Julian Assange. And I went, okay, well I don't quite know what the connection is, but let me find out the, what, if there is one. And, and, and in fact, you know, thanks to what we have now available to us and being able to you know, research things that you never could have done before, I found a, an obscure clip of Julian Assange speaking to uh, issues surrounding the Armenian Genocide. I'm like, oh, he actually has something to say about this subject. And as I got more into it, I, I started to realize this is actually a very rich environment, genocide, human rights, and of course the connection here was with Julian Assange was was becoming more and more clear. Uh, push come to shove. My friend Stephen Rohde helped me connect with Michael Ratner, and we basically figured out a way to get to Julian Assange. And in fact, I interviewed Julian Assange from my garage in Mount Washington near downtown Los Angeles, and I hired a crew in London to do the video work. And uh, lo and behold, uh, I was able to interface with him. And he uh, exposed to us um, some pretty amazing things about, uh, about Turkey, about the relationship between the United States and, and Turkey, and how deep it goes in terms of, uh, this is a, I was going to read this, in fact, I'm going to read this quote because it's really great. This is, a, this is an excerpt, this is an excerpt from my interview with Julian. Um, and normally I would have it on tape, but I think it's better just to read it in some ways. It's quite clear, this is Julian Assange speaking to me, it's quite clear from the cable traffic, in fact, the greatest source of cables and cables that we have released in terms of the numbers is from Ankara, the U.S. mission in Ankara. Why is that? The United States sees Turkey as one of the most important countries in the world geostrategically. You can say that nakedly from our, you can see that nakedly from our cable release. The greatest number of cables is from Ankara because of the central place the Turkey placed within the Middle East, in Europe, and Asia. It is the point that connects all those other points. In fact, that's why Turkey became such a powerful empire. It was because of this central geostrategic position. Also, let's not forget the Tur that Turkey was an empire under the Ottomans within the last hundred years, and there's been a concern that it might, again, one day become an empire. And so the British and the Americans have tried to keep control of Turkey in a variety of ways. Now Turkey militarily is the second largest country in NATO after the United States itself. When Turkey is unified and is able to say, hey look, unless you do what we want, we are going to approach Israel in a different way. We're going to approach Syria in a different way. We're going to approach the Russians in a different way. We're going to approach Europe in a different way. It is able, that is Turkey, it is able to extort all sorts of concessions from Europe and the United States, and it's done exactly, and it's done exactly that in relation to the, Amer and that it has done that exactly in relation to the Armenian genocide. 
So for many years, what I learned on this project, Architects of Denial, was the connection between this corruption of genocide denial and what, you, what, what is being in the necessity of having uh, entities such as WikiLeaks being able to expose this kind of, this kind of information. And so I am going to play just the trailer to Architects of Denial so you can understand a little bit about how all this syncs up. And so it's just not about, it's just not about what's happening in, in the Iraq war logs. It's, it's much broader. It has a much more important aspect to it. And this is also evidence and proof that the work of WikiLeaks and Julian Assange is really about journalism. It's really about research. Yes. It's really about learning how to tell the truth. So I'm going to play this role. I'm going to play this. Um, it was in the spring of 2016. So with the, that's just the trailer for the film, but it also afforded me other opportunities. And in fact, not long after I interviewed Julian Assange, I had the, the pleasure of meeting our, our next speaker, Bianca Bagaturian B, who uh, basically is a playwright. And we were connected through a mutual friend as I was doing research on this project. And uh, essentially, I was telling her about you know, interviewing Julian Assange. And she said, well, you know, I, I, I've, been, I've had this idea about a, a play uh, about Julian Assange. And could you hook me up with some connection? And I said, well, now that I have those connections, yes, I can. And in fact, uh, not long after that, she was on her way to London and uh, she's here with us to talk about her play called Gaslighting. Oh, cool. Thank you, Robert. I was going to say I'm a playwright and human rights activist, but now I will say I'm an Armenian playwright and human rights activist after your trailer. Um, 
I've always been very interested in writing about the truth. My last play, which was just staged in London, was um, about historian Howard Zinn, about his life and work, and we worked together on that before his passing. And I, I strive to do this through engaging in empathetic ways to make audiences and the public um, feel like they can participate and engage in it. So in, in the Zen project, we used a lot of song and dance. Um, now, I think, as, um, I think it was Vincent who was mentioning, when I, um, when I tell anyone I'm working on a play about WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, I also face a lot of disdain. 10 out of 10 people just say, why, why? And, and 10 out of these 10 people, it really angers me, have not even visited the WikiLeaks website. And it, it just makes me try and think, what is this gap where I don't know what, what's blocking them? Is it fear? Is it just lack of interest? Um, we all have such busy lives. But I've been trying to think, in my role as an artist, how can I reflect this and, and bring it closer to everyday public so we're not just preaching to the choir, as, as you just mentioned. Um, so I came up with this idea uh, based on the 1938 Patrick Hamilton play Gaslight, which I don't know if many of you have heard of, but you probably know about the 1944 MGM movie called Gaslight, which starred Ingrid Bergman and Charles Boyer. In fact, Ingrid Bergman was um, nominated for an Academy Award. The film was nominated for many. Um, but it seemed to me that if I could somehow bring what WikiLeaks and Julian is doing down to a personal level, that perhaps people would then have a connection to it. So I came up with this idea, and I'm very pleased to say that I've now been commissioned since uh, we talked last, by an Australian artistic director to write this play, so we're, we are in the midst of doing this. Uh, and we hope to stage it in London later this year. Nate Jones is an, um, he was the artistic director of the Australian Theatre Company here in Los Angeles. It has now been rebranded as United Stages, and it does plays about human rights. Um, so in this play, it actually, the play takes place in the Ecuadorian embassy in, in Julian's living space, and he's watching the movie Gaslight, and Paula, Ingrid Bergman, steps out of the movie into the Ecuadorian embassy, and the play is a two-hander, a discussion between Julian and Paula, Ingrid Bergman, about being um, gaslit, and her talking about it on a personal level, and the consequences, and what you suffer when someone distorts your reality, and you know, when you become a victim, and everything, you know, your thinking is happening, is, is not happening, and something different is happening, and Julian explaining how that's what governments and institutions do to people today. Yes. So that's what we are working on now. I hope you will all come and see it when it's out. I'm sure we'll try and stay with you. Thank you.